Good night, viewers, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Sports Scene. If you just tuned in, it's always a pleasure to have you join me on the show tonight. Suppose I may first the time to you, the what seems sports in good night through the you. All right, without further ado, here's what's coming up on the show tonight. We have PNG's female NRL player Elsie Albert, as well as the Oceania Weightlifting Federation's General Secretary and National Weightlifting Coach Paul Koffer. They will be joining me shortly on the show tonight. But before that, let's take a look at the weekend scoreline. NRL Round 10 Magic Round results. On Friday night, we saw the Raiders 34 defeating the Bulldogs on 30 points and the Broncos 32 running out victorious against the Sea Eagles on 6. On Saturday, Panthers 18 defeated the Warriors on 6, Dolphins 36 defeating Sharks on 16, and the Rabbitohs 28 defeating the Storms on 12 points. On Sunday, West Tigers 18 defeated Dragons 16, Cowboys 20 defeated the Roosters 6, and Titans 26 defeated the Parramatta Eels on 24. Host Plus Cup Round 8 results tweeted Seagulls 50 points defeated Clydes Dulles 18 points, Magpies 34 defeating the winner Manly Seagulls 12, PNG Hunters registering back to back wins on home ground with a 40 points defeat against Ipswich Jets on 28, Belly Bears 16 defeating Capris on 12, Northern Pride 16 defeating the Mackay Cutters on 12 points. East Tigers 36 defeating Blackhawks 18 and competition leaders maintaining their winning streak Falcons 28 defeating the North Devils 24. In the Super Rugby Round 11 results Chiefs 52 defeating Highlanders 28. The Fijian drew us causing an upset against Hurricanes 27 points to 24 and the Crusaders 48 defeating Western Falls on 13 points. The Auckland Blues 31 defeating Mohana Pacifica on 30 points. Waratahs 32 running out victors over Queensland Reds 24 and Brambridge 33 defeating Melbourne Rebels on 26 points. The Capital Rugby Union Premier Men's results for Round 5 the Harley Queens 32 Defeating University Piggies on 8 points, Brothers 29, defeating Valley Hunters nil, Wondrous 12, defeating Marlins on 5, and the Nova wrapping up the competition there with a win on 24 points against Crusaders on 12. And that was our weekend scoreline, which saw some upsets in the NRL and Super Rugby as well. All right, we'll take a short break now, but before we do that, let's take a look at some highlights of last weekend's PGA Golf Tournament here in Port Moresby. The Professional Golfers Association Tour of Australasia Tournament saw over 82 professionals and amateur co competing at the Port Moresby Royal Golf Club after a three-year hiatus. The four days tournament saw Australian golfer Lachlan Bakker winning the overall title and a cash price of 32,400 Australian dollars. Baka came from behind at the second hole during the final day, ending up with an overall result of 14 under. After falling behind tournament favorite Christopher Wood in the third round, Baka needed several baddies to take the lead in the final round and eventually got him home. Tournament coordinator James Nichols said the tournament was a huge success while thanking the sponsors and management for supporting them in staging the four days tournament. We'll take a short break now and when we return we will head straight into our first segment with PNG's female NRL player Elsie Albert right here on Sports Scene. Stay with us. Welcome back viewers. All right, we have on the show tonight is our female NRL player, Elsie Albert, joining us on the show. Elsie, good night and how are you doing? Good night, good night. I'm good, thank you. I'm doing very well. 
All right, Elsie, before we get tunes rolling, uh, we will ask uh, maybe you just uh, introduce yourself and where you're from so our viewers have a fair idea of uh, where you're actually from. Uh, yeah, as my name's uh, as mentioned, Elsie Albert, and I'm from the Southern Islands uh, province. Uh, uh, where I'm from, to be exact, it's a little bit tricky. Uh, we're like on the border of uh, Pangia and um, uh, Kaguera, so I'm like in between those. So people from Pangia call me, you know, I'm from Kaguera, and then people from there tell, tell us that we're from Pangia. So I guess I'm a bit in between. Uh, I'm from Pangia, but then I'm from Kaguera as well too. <laughs> so yeah, I'm from Southern Islands and yeah, grew most of my life um, set up in, in the islands of New Guinea, so yeah. Tell us a bit about how it feels to sign another contract with the Parramatta Eels women's NRL team and uh, what's the duration of the contract like? Oh yeah, it's it's very it's very exciting. Um, I've signed a, the duration of the contract is for two years, so it's uh, this year and uh, next year. Um, yeah, so it's it's pretty exciting for me to you know to finally get to sign multi multi year contracts because we haven't had that for the last few seasons. So for for this year, I think um, the RPA, which is the uh, players' representative um, association, like those group have you know really put together. Um, things for us, like NRL and NRLW players. So with that, like they've been able to, for us, the ladies, they've been able to get us um, to sign multi-year contracts. And this is the first first year that, you know, we're signing multi-year contracts. So it's pretty exciting. All right, just tell us a bit about how uh, the contract news, uh, how you received the contract news. Oh, yeah, it's um, the contract news is like, I've been, like they've been in contact with me since before I went down to the World Cup. So, like they, you know, marked me as one of the players that they really want to have have in their club, and I think that made a difference for me, and like that made me to push towards signing with them as well. Like they've respected me and respected that, you know, enough to, you know, stay like uh, chase after me from the World Cup, and then after the World Cup, they stayed in contact with my manager, and um, yeah, I think. It's not like they woke up one day and then, you know, just said, oh, we want to sign you. It's like it's a process. Like they followed me through my World Cup campaign after that, like they messaged and then, yeah, and, and, and I finally signed. Uh, how's the atmosphere and the environment there at, uh, in Parramatta? Oh, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. I've, like, I've moved down, I've settled in, in, in a small suburb close to Parramatta. It's um, just five minutes uh, five minutes drive to Para, so yeah, it's really pretty pretty good. I'm enjoying, you know, first first few weeks here, but it's it's been it's been really good. Uh, what are you looking forward to taking out uh, from your time with the Parramatta women's team? Uh, for me, it's it's just to um, just better myself, uh, better to be a better player. Um, and, and and every other team's you know goal the end goal is to is to win a premiership you know i've i've went close enough to play in the grand final but haven't won a premiership yet so yeah it, like my end goal would be you know i've got two years to do it with the parameter eel so my end goal would be at least to you know uh, lift lift that trophy uh, win that premiership when i'm when i'm with the para so yeah all right um as an international player, you represented PNG Orchids. You also played an NRL with the Dragons. And as from your own perspective, do you think uh, more PNG players should be signed by NRL clubs going forward? Yes, definitely, definitely. They can be signed, but I think um, you know if girls want to come down here and you know have a crack um, back home, you have to participate. You know, participate in the PNG RFL sanctioned programs, you know, participate in the PNG RFL sanctioned uh, women's league as well back home. And in saying that, I'm not saying that, you know, girls are not participating, but, you know, there's a lot of number of girls participating in the leagues back home. So in, in that in that league, like, there's a lot of talent coming through as well. 
and uh, there's no other way for them to get exposure unless you play for the Orchids. So yeah, like definitely NRL, you know, NRLW coaches and recruiting officers would be, you know, keen to sign girls from there, but they have to show commitment and, you know, discipline and stuff like that. Those are the important things that will get, you know, girls, uh, girls to sign. Yeah. Thank you, Elsia. Just before we go, uh, just one last question. As an elite rugby league player, uh, what would be the best advice you can give to aspiring female rugby players that are also chasing the same dream to play in NRL one day? Yes. Um, yeah. Like I said before, um, I think uh, yeah, you just have to participate. Uh, you know, play rugby league at the levels that you know PNG, RFL, um, You know, sign not sign, but uh, just uh, what's the right term? Um, you know, PNG, RFL sanctioned leagues are there for you girls to you know participate and uh, just participate and you know be committed. Like stay committed. Uh, and then, like, one of the things that I usually tell, like, when I attend, like, school, like, they invited me to go and, you know, speak and stuff, I usually tell them to do, not just in sports, but in life, just um, figure out what you want to do in life. And then when you have figured out what you want to do, you, you plan a process, you plan what you want to do, and then consistently um, follow that follow the plan that you've laid out for you to you to go you consistently follow it and then like uh, if you don't have discipline you can't be consistent so you have to be disciplined stay consistent and follow your plans whatever plans you have in life you know, follow that plan that you've laid out for yourself so be consistent and be disciplined well, I think uh, that's about it. Thank you very much, Elsie, for your time with Sportsin. And uh, we wish you all the best in your future and do us going forward for this year. Thank you. Thanks for having me. There you have it. That was our yeah. female NRL player, Elsie Albert. We wish Elsie all the best and we will take a short break now. And when we return, we will bring you more on Sportsin. <laughs> Welcome back and you're watching Sports In. In this segment, we interviewed Oceania Weightlifting Federation's General Secretary and National Coach Paul Koffer, who traveled into the country last week to run a two days weightlifting technical seminar for local coaches and weightlifters. The seminar was part of PNG Weightlifting Federation's vision to develop the sport in a bigger way going forward. Let's take a look and hear what Mr. Koffer had to say about his vision in terms of developing weightlifting throughout the country. Um, this year, um, I would attend and run a coaching seminar for um, not only coaching but technical seminar for uh, many uh, coaches, uh, future coaches of weightlifting in uh, in um, PNG. Um, there is so much talent, uh, and um, everything has been channeled towards Port Moresby, and I think it's important that the provinces get involved. It's important that you develop coaches um, around the around Port Moresby, not just significant, especially one particular place, Port Moresby. And that's the reason why I'm here, to try and develop coaches uh, around uh, the provinces in order to uh, develop the sport in a bigger way and not restrict it in one area only, just Port Moresby. Uh, we are developing uh, club coaches, and then the idea is within within uh, uh, one year we'll go to level level uh, one coaching. But at this stage, I need to develop clubs around the Pacific, uh, around the uh, provinces. That's the most important thing. 
uh, I've coached, I coached every Pacific, every PNG lifter since weightlifting, even going back to Paul Anuki in the 80s. Uh, I've been associated with PNG for so many years, but of course in the last uh, 15, 20 years with Stephen Curry and Maria and of course the Vika and Dika's sister uh, came and uh, uh, told here so many leaders, so much, but all coming from the same uh, district. And, and I am just saying that there are so many districts that you have which have been tapped. Today is the beginning. Look, uh, um, Steve is still young, or I still young. Uh, I don't know whether Steve will continue. I mean, he's brilliant. Um, it all depends whether I can convince him to to make a comeback. She, he's been an heir of the game for about four years, but um, I still think that <clears throat> if he starts now, he'll win three gold. I don't know that. That's how good it is. Making the Olympics, I think, I think would be too, too, too hard for him. But winning three gold in Oneyara at the Pacific Games, that's no problem at all. I hope that with my visit here, this can happen and unify the group, unite the group together. So that if you have a group of this Calipers of you know lifters of this huge world uh, class performance lifters that will create a lot of interest. And the idea is to have these athletes coming across the different provinces and putting exhibitions and so on, stimulate the people. You're not going to stimulate the sport if you stay within and Wabada and within the district of the of the, of the port And that was the Oceania Weightlifting Federation's General Secretary and National Weightlifting Coach, Paul Koffer. Mr. Koffer will be visiting other Pacific Island countries in the next weeks before he heads back to Australia, where he will be preparing our weightlifters like Dika Toa and Moray Baru for the upcoming Pacific Games, as well as the 2024 Paris Olympic Games. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, we will wrap things up right here on Sports Scene. Welcome back to Sports Scene. All right, we'll head straight into our weekend previews for what's coming up this weekend. We'll start with NRL Round 11 draws. This test day, we'll see the Melbourne Storms taking on the Broncos. I hope the Melbourne Storms cause some upset against Broncos. Then on Friday, we'll see the Bulldogs taking on Warriors and Panthers going up against the Roosters. On Saturday, the Rebitos will go, against, go up against West Tigers. Cowboys going up against the Dragons and the Raiders will go head-to-head -head against the Hills. Then on Sunday's doubleheader, the Knights will go up against the Titans and Sea Eagles will take on the Cronulla Sharks to wrap up round 11 of NRL. The Oatlas Cup round 9 draws will see the Blackhawks taking on the PNG Hunters, Cutters going up against the Bears, Capras will go up against the Dolphins, Magpies going up against Seagulls, Clydesdales versus Norton Pride and North Devils going up against the Tigers. For Super Rugby round 12 draws on Friday night, we'll see the Chiefs going up against the Queensland Reds, Western Force taking on Fiji and Drua, then on Saturday Hurricanes will take on Mohana Pacifica, Crusaders will go up against the Auckland Blues, Waratahs vs the Rebels on Saturday. On Sunday, the Brumbies will take on the Islanders. 
for the Capital Rugby Union Round 6 Premier Men's Draws on Saturday. The Moni Plus Nova will go up against the Valley Hunters. University Pig is taking on the Marlins. Then on Sunday, Defense will play Wondrous and Ali Queens will take on Crusaders to wrap up Round 6 of CRU. And that was the weekend sports previews for what's coming up this weekend. We will be sharing on all the content online, so do hit like on our page and share on share our videos as much as you can. Oh yeah, contact details if you do have story tips or sports events that you would like us to cover, do contact us on the following numbers 312-9229 email sportsin at mtv.com.pg or visit us at Garden City Level 2 Boroko. Also you can inbox our FB page and do leave your contact details as well as your full name so we can get back to you. That's about it. We will see you same time, same place next week. Until then, keep safe and it's a bye for now. Hey.